All right, today what I wanna do is take a look at something called the continuity equation. And the continuity equation is really just a way of talking about the change in velocity of a fluid, or really an incompressible fluid, as it passes from a pipe of one diameter to a pipe of a different diameter. Now what I've done here is I've taken a, a pipe or a tube and at a certain position it has a, a certain diameter and then it necks down to a pipe of a smaller diameter. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna relate the velocities of the fluid passing through this position or position one to the velocity of the fluid as it passes through position two here. So the first thing we're gonna do here is say that the fluid as it passes this point or this, this line in the pipe of position one has some certain velocity and let's just make it easy. Let's call this velocity one. And that is the forward velocity of the fluid as it passes this position one in our pipe. And when this fluid gets to position two, it's gonna have some other velocity. We'll call that velocity two. And really all we're doing in this problem is trying to relate these two velocities to each other. And the way that these two velocities are related is driven through or dictated by the cross-sectional areas of these pipes at these two positions. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that at position one, this pipe has some cross-sectional area we'll call area one. And at position two, it has a cross-sectional area that we're gonna call area two. It makes sense. Now to understand the continuity equation, the first thing we have to do is agree that there's going to be no buildup of fluid inside this chamber. That is to say, whatever fluid comes into this pipe or passes position one is eventually going to have to pass position two. Imagine if that wasn't the case. Imagine if more fluid came through position one than past position two. You get a buildup of fluid in here, it would be like a bomb inside a pipe. That fluid has to go somewhere because in the continuity equation, really what we're saying is this fluid is incompressible. We can't stack it up or store it. Once we see that the continuity equation relies on the fact that all of the mass or volume of fluid which passes this position is also going to pass this position, then we can start to set up some math for this. Now here we're talking about an area and a velocity. But what I wanna do is take time out of this. Realize velocity is simply a displacement over time. And so what I wanna do is look at the displacement of some fluid which passes this position in say one second. Now if this fluid is moving along at some velocity, then in one second it's going to move forward a certain distance. Now, if we let fluid flow past this position for one second, yeah, it's gonna move forward some distance, I'm calling it delta x1. And really what's gonna happen here is a column of fluid is going to travel down this pipe some distance delta x1. And this column of fluid is really nothing other than a cylinder. It has some cross-sectional area and some length. That length is given by the distance which fluid is going to move through this pipe in some unit of time, like a second. And realize the whole point or driving concept behind the continuity equation is that the volume of fluid which passes this position in a certain amount of time is going to be equal to the volume of fluid which passes this position in that same amount of time. So really you could think of this as a volume of fluid going into the system or into this neck in the pipe and a volume of fluid going out of the system or out of this neck in the pipe. So because these two volumes have to be the same, we can relate how far this fluid as it passes position two is gonna travel in a certain amount of time to how far the fluid which passes position one is going to move in a certain amount of time. You'll remember we called that delta x1. So we'll call the distance the fluid travels over here how about delta x2? So now we have enough here to set up some math to actually derive the continuity equation. And we're gonna start with the conservation of volume, we're really saying the volume as it passes position one equals the volume as it passes position two. Now the volume of fluid as it passes either of these positions is simply given by the equation for the area of a cylinder. Realize we have a cross-sectional area that is the cross-section of the pipe 
times the height of our cylinder or length of our cylinder, and that is simply the change in position of the fluid over some period of time as it travels along the pipe. So for our volume one, the volume of this cylinder is going to be area one multiplied by this change in position. And volume two is gonna be area two multiplied by this change in position. Now remember, we're trying to get back to the relationship between the velocities of the fluid at these two positions. And what we have here is a change in position and a change in position. Ultimately, what we've done, going way back to the beginning, is we took time out of this, the relationship between velocity and change in position being time. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide both sides of this equation by time, or really by change in time, and this is gonna get us back to velocity because you remember a change in position over a change in time is nothing other than velocity. So this leaves us with this, the continuity equation. Now there's two things with this that need to be pointed out. The first is this V is velocity, it is not volume. It's really easy to start talking about volumes here and suddenly confuse V for volume with V for velocity as it shows up in the continuity equation. Now sometimes you'll see this equation written with density or the density of the fluid in front of each of these terms. And really all that's saying is that rather than having velocity be conserved, we can have mass conserved as that fluid goes from position one to position two. Uh, but if we're talking about an incompressible fluid, like water or hydraulic fluid, uh, this continuity equation really just relies on the conservation of volume. If we're talking about a compressible fluid, something like air, then it becomes a little bit more complicated and we need to insert density into the formula. But this is the continuity equation for incompressible fluids. And on that note, that's all for now.